Welcome to the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We're here tonight to talk about capitalism as opposed to socialism in America. Yeah, this is still the Bible Forum. These things dovetail. What do Americans believe to be the best? Do Americans believe that capitalism is better or do they believe that socialism is better? A February 2019 Fox News poll based on landline and cell phone interviews with 1,004 randomly chosen registered voters nationwide was conducted under the joint direction of Beacon Research uh, formerly named Anderson Robbins Research and Shaw and Company Research. One is a Democrat organization, one is a Republican organization. This was conducted just this February 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2019. The poll is a margin of sampling error of plus or minus three percentage points regarding all registered voters. What they found is that capitalism is far more popular in America than socialism. The poll also found that economic optimism is high, and the number wanting, to help, wanting help from the government is the lowest it's been in years. The poll asks what message voters want to send to the federal government, and over half of them said, leave me alone. <laughs> About a third would ask Uncle Sam to lend me a hand, and another third would say, and the third saying, lend me a hand, is down from 41% last year. It's down from 39% in 2016. The 55% who would tell the government, leave me alone, is up from 51% in 2018 and 54% in 2016. Young people, meaning those under the age of 50 years, seem to have no idea what's going on, only whether or not they are getting a fair share. In this pool, 57% of voters have a positive opinion of capitalism. Only 57%. But that's more than twice the number who feel the same about socialism, because that's only a 25% ratio. But this is only among registered voters. And the pollsters and others ask the question, how many millennials actually vote? How many are registered? They're out in the street, but do they go to the polls? When interviewed on camera, they don't seem to know what time it is, politically, socially, or economically. And many of these interviews are conducted on college campuses. Some of the groups most likely to have a favorable view of socialism include self-identified liberals at 50%. Clinton voters were 43%. Those under age 30 were 36%. Now, the researchers wrote and saying, despite the prominence of socialistic ideas and policy proposals in recent weeks, Americans are favorable toward the merits of the capitalistic system. And they're bullish on the state of the economy. Nearly four out of five voters feel their family either achieved the American dream or is on the way toward achieving it. Only one in five believes the dream is out of reach. That's 20%. 63% feel optimistic about the economy. In 2016, it was only 49% who felt op optimistic. And the question becomes, Trumpism? By 47 to 42 percent margin, voters think capitalism in the United States gives them a fair shot. Men, 58 percent, are 21 points more likely than women to say that. Similarly, whites, 52 percent, 
are 19 points more likely than non-whites and voters ages 45 and older, over are 17 percent more inclined than those under age 45 to feel they're getting a fair deal. The researchers maintain that this is not a ringing endorsement of capitalism in our country. When less than half of Americans feel they have a fair shot. However, it does not factor in the education system, nor the media. These two agencies, the entities, are working hard for the last 80 years to tear down these ideals. They maintain that, quote, if the debate over what is best for America devolves into fear-mongering and labeling socialists, then no one wins. But when less than half say they have a fair shot, there's clearly an opening for new policy ideas. Meanwhile, the number thinking Americans rely too much on government, not enough on themselves, has also dropped. 61% feel that way today. It was 74% in 2013. By a 25-point margin, more Republicans, 72%, than Democrats, 47%, have a positive view of capitalism. Republicans are three times as likely as Democrats to have a strongly favorable view. Six in ten Democrats say capitalism does not give them a fair shot. While over half of Democrats would tell the government to lend me a hand, most Republicans, 77%, joined by a 58% majority of independents, say, leave me alone. Most Republicans, 84%, think Americans rely too much on the government. And that hasn't changed a great deal since 2013. Then it was 83%, uh, 87%. But in contrast, there's been a major shift among Democrats. 38% say Americans are too dependent. That's down from 58% five years ago. What's all that say about the current affairs? Well, clearly the De Democrat Party has been deliberately shifting from a Republican form of government, identified as the principles of a theory of government in which the supreme power rests in a body of citizens entitled to vote and exercised by representatives they elect directly or indirectly and by an elected or nominated president. The philosophy and practice of republicanism has suffered greatly over the last hundred years, beginning with Teddy Roosevelt's embrace of progressivism, no doubt stimulated by the advance of socialism in the early 19th century. They are very similar. Exaggerated by his cousin Franklin, 30 or 40 years later, who took advantage of the Great Depression, which some maintain was orchestrated to move us away from the principles of our republic monetarily into a system where non-elected officials have an inordinate amount of secret power. We are continually amazed at what non-elected officials have done when the light of day is shown on their behavior, generally when the other party regains power and turns the light on and goes, oh my goodness, look at this. Today, Americans under the age of 50 have only a vague idea of what America is really about. Case in point, a government-run health care system? That's communism not capitalism. Americans are now split 47-47 over implementing a government-run national health care system. It seems the poorer we are, the more we like the government taking care of us. But that can only happen when there is a deliberate dumbing down of the populace. And, of course, that's exactly what we're seeing through our government-run education system, beginning in the 1930s. It was producing thinkers, and then it changed 
and now it is producing an ever-increasing number of uninformed Americans. The media being the current propagandists and the population being hooked on media, cell phones, internet, you name it. When it comes to U.S. government-run health care, 75% of Democrats favor it, while 77% of Republicans oppose it. And the independents split the difference, 45-46. It's interesting that with the change of White House occupants, the opinions regarding government health care also change. Tax reform law and Obamacare have both lost in popularity. The tax law now has a net negative rating by a narrow two points, 34 favorable, 36 unfavorable. That's a nine point shift just since October of 2018. The same is true with health care. It's now viewed as favorable by only two points. It was a plus 11 points just last October. What's all this these numbers, percentage, say about Americans. It says that we are foolishly influenced by our greed and the media. We are easily swayed one way or the other. We don't have a solid course that we're running, that, that we stand on. We don't think through the issues. We don't evaluate the pluses and the minuses. And that doesn't even allow for looking back as to how we were established and what that did for us. We just simply want, or we need. And with the want and the need, that's all it takes. The idea that it's our responsibility to get an education, not the government's, that it's our responsibility to develop our skills in order to get a better job? That it's our responsibility to budget the money we have? Never seems to occur to young people. And I'm talking about people under the age of 50. And now we have even older people falling prey to this kind of poison. It's a poison that is made likable, not by the way it's presented, but by the way it appeals to our selfish desires. Because that's what we have become, selfish. Selfishness is a sin, according to the Bible. That's why we want the Bible to go away. Personal responsibility is what this country was built on. Republicanism. That's why we want that to go away. And I'm not saying the Republican Party today is the bastion of Republicanism. It isn't. But it's closer than anything else. And the Democrats, they've been hijacked by the liberal wing of their party. And they're beginning to take the masks off. We're beginning to see them for what they are. If they get in power again, watch all of this swing the other way and farther. And we'll fight our way back again. This is about the fourth or fifth time in my lifetime that I've seen this happen. And each time it gets worse. We thought Jimmy Carter was bad until we got Bill Clinton. We thought Bill Clinton was bad until we got old Barack Obama. And you can see the degradation as these ideas take root in more and more young people and then they grow up and now they, they've got this thing going. It's sad. But it's another reason why Christians who know their Bible are looking for Jesus because this kind of system cannot continue. It has to implode, and it will.